A strange new world of biohybrid robotics integrates living cells with artificial technology. These new generation of robots demonstrate nature's high level of adaption, but are they ethical? It also begs the question of what is sentience and how does one determine self-awareness? But more importantly, is there any kind of limitation on these type of robots? And how quickly are they going to advance in the next few years? Well, these are all very good questions, and the progression of this type of technology is actually pretty alarming. One of the earliest forms of a hybrid robot has recently resurfaced on Reddit, and it has gained a lot of attention. This particular machine was built over a decade ago, and it utilizes brain cells from a rat. The weird contraption was remotely communicating with the partial brain, and this brain sent commands back. The rat's neurons stayed alive for three months, so there was speculation on whether or not the robot could learn over time. However, many wondered if this thing was actually sentient or even capable of thinking. Regardless, it does make you wonder where the conscious mind originates from and how much of the brain would actually constitute self-awareness. However, these types of robots are not just limited to neurons. You can integrate many different things, including muscular systems. The US Army Research Laboratory is already leading this forefront. They have experimented with growing tissue in a lab and then connecting these tissues within a robot's mechanical system, thereby increasing flexibility and mobility to the robot. However, these cells can be grown in a variety of genomes and even from a variety of different species. I guess what you can take away from this is maybe in the future there could be some type of humanoid robot which is kind of like a cybernetic life form. Combined with the spike neural network, this type of robot would have a high degree of maneuverability and obviously this would be superior to any human with natural locomotion. And in turn, this is probably why the US Army is highly interested in this technology. Another type of bio-robot stems from the Barcelona Institute of Science and Technology. This particular bot also exemplifies muscular systems and their advantages. The team basically 3D printed a polymer skeleton and used it as a scaffold for growing skeletal muscles. The muscle can be controlled through electrical stimulation. This is translated into a spring. Once the spring is released, it propels the robot forward. Now, this robot is quite a bit faster than a synthetic system, and it can move around three body lengths or 800 micrometers a second. One distinct outcome from this research is that it might eventually be used in nanorobotics. I don't think this is going to create any kind of nanorobotic superhuman, but it does show that we could have some specific delivery systems which can target specific areas of the body. Organic cells can also be stimulated with light as well. This particular stingray robot has heart cells from a rat. A transparent elastic polymer was combined with the cells and the bot was placed in a saline solution with sugar in order to keep it alive. These cells act both as an actuator and sensor, so it can be controlled to some degree. Ultimately, the team would like to build an artificial heart for patients with heart disease. So this kind of hybrid research does have a limited amount of good intention. Now, hybrid robots are not just limited to neurons or even muscle tissues for that matter. And I have covered this next robot before, but it's called the infamous Mothicopter. It basically amplifies an artificial mechanism with a biological attribute. In this case, a moth antenna. Researchers were able to add wires into the ends of this antenna, and the drone was programmed to hunt for odors using the same technique as a moth. The drone is exceptionally efficient in detecting odors, and this could be used in a wide variety of applications including disease or even explosive detection. The last robot which I'll mention is not even really a robot at all, and it's a sense of biohacking. Making tiny drones can be really challenging, so researchers genetically modified a dragonfly to make its nerve endings light sensitive. An attached backpack actually sends signals to the dragonfly with these flashes of light, basically controlling the insect. This not only makes it to be one of the smallest drones in the world, but it's also one of the most controversial as well. It's pretty unlikely that insects feel pain in the same way we do, but nevertheless this is a pretty crude form of control. And obviously this is depriving the dragonfly of its self-will. Ultimately this type of cyborg modification is far superior to any artificial drone. So there is a pretty big incentive in using it for surveillance or even delivery missions. 
So the next flying insect outside your window may very well be a half cybernetic being spying on your next move. This type of subject is really weird because we know that these types of commands can override the insect's will. And it does make you wonder if synthetic algorithms or even spike neural networks could override biological systems. This is kind of ironic because science fiction has touched on this subject before. And I just question where the limitation is on this type of technology. Can it actually control a human or is it limited to basic life forms? We just do not know yet. Based on what we have already created, we will see very strange and advanced robotics which are nothing like the artificial constructs we see today. And given the ease of access to these biological systems, I don't see this stopping anytime soon. Anyways, I would like to know what you think, so please leave a comment about where you think this is going to go. Like the video and make sure to subscribe to my channel.